Arctic National Wildlife Refuge in northeastern Alaska is one of the last great wildernesses on Earth. This remote region spans 19 million acres across the Arctic. Arctic traveler and pioneering musher Joe Henderson has been undertaking Arctic expeditions with his teams of Alaskan Malamutes for 30 years. Each year, Joe and his dogs spend three to four months at a time exploring this vast and frozen part of the world. I joined the Malamute man himself and his team of 22 Alaskan Malamutes on an Arctic expedition lasting 12 days. Due to his remarkable sled dog team, Joe is able to reach areas which are impassable and inaccessible by any other means. Towards the end of his solo expeditions, Joe invites small groups of adventurous souls to join him. There were six people in our merry band of explorers, including Joe. I had traveled alone from Scotland and didn't know a soul, but what we all had in common was our love of Malamutes. The Alaskan Malamute is the largest of the five Kennel Club recognized Arctic dog breeds. It is one of the world's most ancient breeds. The word Malamute is derived from the name of the Inuit people known as the Malamut tribe who settled along the shores of the Kotzebue Sound in northwestern Alaska within the Arctic Circle over 5,000 years ago. Alaskan Malamutes were prized by the Inupiat people for their strength, endurance and working ability. Being a nomadic people, the Malamut fished and hunted inland. In winter, they hunted on the coast. The dogs were vital to the Malamut in transporting their supplies between camps and in stalking, hunting and hauling quarry such as seals and polar bears. Early European explorers noted the interdependence between the Malamut and their dogs. This was a true partnership for survival. During the 1890s Klondike Gold Rush, the Malamute was in extremely high demand by prospectors in need of powerful and hardworking freight dogs. The Alaskan Malamute has also played an important role in many historically significant polar expeditions, including the Antarctic expeditions of Peary, Amundsen and Bird to the South Pole. Okay, why am I? Okay. The most difficult breed on earth, and you've got 34 of them. Why? <laughs> the reason I have Malamutes is because they are best suited for, for the Arctic. And, but it's not the reason I have them, of course. The reason I have them is because they're a special breed. No. There's no other breed like it. It's very intelligent. Very personable, um, loving, loyal, extremely passionate, extremely passionate of their work. I, I train all summer, mm -hmm. all fall, even in the spring. The first three weeks I think I'm going to die <laughs> because it's so physical. It's extremely physical. I mean, when you get up 4, 4.30 in the morning, you, you start breaking camp, doing your chores, feeding dogs and it's 50, 60 blow, and uh, it just, I'll be burning 10,000 calories a day. And then uh, after, <laughs> after a few days, it all goes by, you wonder if you're gonna live. <laughs> but after three weeks, seems like your body adjusts, and the dogs finally are really happy because they get to pull steady every day. And then uh, from that point on, it's, it's usually a good 16, 14 to 16 hours a day of, of work. Um, you get up in the morning, you, you break camp, eat breakfast, break camp, feed dogs, um, travel. It depends on the air humidity, how long you can travel. I know that sounds strange, but uh, the drier it is, less hours you can travel. And as the humidity goes up, you can travel farther. But anyhow, so when you make camp, you have all your chores to do, you have harnesses to fix, lines to fix, dogs to feed. Your sleds need to be turned over and, and scraped clean, um, set up camp, and then you have to scout for a new route that evening um, because you just there are so many crevasses and thin ice and rivers and cliffs you just can't wander off. But also I like to find routes through the mountains, pioneering routes, and also I look for landmarks that like warm springs has geological you know, significance to them. Last year, um, found some new discoveries of 
some warm springs, a lot of thermals, but the state was a world, and they're interested in mapping them now. Each day, we lashed our gear and equipment onto the sleds, strapped on our skis and set off, travelling further and further into the frozen wilderness on the north side of the Brooks Range. We were on the move for around five to six hours each day, covering a total distance of 120 miles over 12 days. Sometimes we skied in front of the dog team, sometimes behind, and sometimes we got to hitch a ride on the sleds. Every evening, after the day's exertions, Joe then attended to his dogs and we set up camp. We unloaded the sleds and carefully unpacked our tents and gear for the night. We slept in heated tents custom designed by Joe. After flattening and packing down the deep snow, we dug out large sinkholes to trap the cold heavy air inside the tent, leaving snow bunkers around the edges on which to place a ground sheet and a couple of foam mats to sleep on, as well as our gear and a small wood-burning stove carefully balanced on a flat wooden board. These little stoves were our only source of heat, the only means by which to prepare meals, which alternated between protein-heavy meals of meat and vegetables or instant meals which had to be rehydrated with melted snow. Melting small amounts of snow in a pan over the stove was the only way we could obtain the water we required both for drinking and washing. Firewood was one of our most precious commodities as it was crucial to our survival and yet in extremely limited supply. The Arctic National Wildlife Refuge is an Arctic tundra ecosystem. It is a barren, frozen desert with perennially frozen ground called permafrost, which is up to 740 meters thick. Large expanses of land are almost entirely devoid of trees or shrubs, so whenever we came across frozen creeks, we collected as much wood as we could and carried it with us on top of the sleds. of our evenings was on survival, food and firewood. 
but we also had a lot of fun, sometimes toasting marshmallows and cooking popcorn on open campfires, discussing the day's experiences and swapping stories from back home. We also practiced shooting targets such as tins or blocks of wood with the rifles we carried with us in case of close encounters with hungry bears. This is Mount Loki. One evening, Joe presented me with the opportunity to name a mountain, and I picked this striking pyramid. The expedition was both physically and mentally demanding. As we continued deeper and deeper into this wild landscape, I became more and more awestruck by the unbelievable strength, stamina and focus of Joe's dogs. They were pulling sleds weighing around 2,500 pounds over terrain and conditions which varied from hour to hour, day by day. But whether we were ploughing through deep snow, scaling high ridges or practically skating across sheets of ice over frozen rivers, the Malamute's passion and sheer joy for their work was obvious. Joe and his dogs were seemingly able to overcome any obstacle in our path. When the sleds got stuck on a ridge and the dogs became tangled in the lines, Joe calmly set about untangling the dogs and adjusting some of the dogs' positions within the team. When Joe gave the command to go, the more vocal dogs began whining to rally the troops. As the vocalizations carried down the line, with perfect timing, the dogs all leaned into harness at once, freeing the sleds. Joe's Malamutes are such a phenomenal team that they can literally break trail through snow so deep that they have to swim through it. Joe's sled dog team consists of 22 Alaskan Malamutes, made up of three different sizes. Without this variation in the size and build of the dogs, hauling huge weights in such conditions would be impossible. The first half of the team are breaking the trail, and the second half are the big muscles pulling the weight.
second of every day was a moment to be treasured. The shadows and light were constantly changing the scenery in front of our eyes, the snow glinting in the sunlight like trillions of tiny diamonds. Due to the time of year, the days were long, with the night time only lasting around three hours. For an animal lover and nature enthusiast, and particularly as a Malamute owner, this expedition truly was the experience of a lifetime, and I shall carry with me always the memories of this magical trip. very last day of the Arctic expedition and uh, it's been absolutely tremendous. Uh, I'm actually really sad to be um, heading back towards civilization tomorrow. I've had an incredible time. Um, never experienced anything like what I've experienced and seen and, and done in the last um, fortnight whilst I've been here in the Arctic. So it's, been, it's been extremely hard work, very exhausting. Um, the temperature's been unbelievably cold, um, but it's been worth every, every second of it. I've loved every moment.